properties of limits. Suppose you have two functions f and g. Uh, f goes to a as x goes to a. Uh, g goes to b, capital B, as x goes to lowercase a. Uh, if that is known, then there are several things that you can say about uh, the sum of the two functions or subtraction or division multiplication. Uh, now, if you have f plus g, what's the limit of this function as x goes to a? Well, f will get closer and closer to a, g of x will get closer and closer to b, therefore uh, their sum would get closer and closer to a plus b. Now this is kind of obvious uh, if you thought in terms of examples, so uh, I'm not going to spend too much time explaining why, even though the textbook actually writes things as if properties to be memorized. That you really shouldn't memorize these, it's because it's just obvious. So if you subtract, you get a minus b. Uh, if you multiply, you get a times b. Uh, well, the last one is a little more complicated because uh, if you have a denominator, if you have a fraction, and when the denominator becomes zero, then all kinds of strange things ha can happen. But if the denominator is not zero, if b is not zero, then uh, you can still have this. Okay, uh, so this is kind of useless to write down. What's more important is uh, to be able to use such theorems in the context of a problem. So I'll just do an example problem, and if you can't do this, then uh, you can just uh, ignore what was said before, okay? So uh, here's an example problem. You have two functions f of 3 is 4, g of 3 is negative 1, whereas uh, limit of f of x as x goes to 3 is 2, and limit of g of x as x goes to 3 is negative 5. And you're asked to compute the following. Now at this point, you might be a little confused. Uh, how can you have a value of the function different from its limit? Well, uh, you can. So let me just explain this a little bit and then after that we'll try to explain uh, the problem okay we'll try to solve this problem so first I want to show you uh, an example of such a function so suppose you have a function which at 3 the value of the function gets closer and closer to 2 meaning that here's 2 and the function gets closer and closer to 2 uh, both left and right so you have this but maybe the actual value at, the, at 3 is different. So we put a, a solid circle here, saying that the actual value of the function is 4, whereas uh, if you take the limit of the function as x goes to 3, well, that means uh, you're looking at the behavior of the function as you go from the left and right. In that case, it's going to be 2. Because uh, if you get closer and closer to this location 3, the height of the function uh, gets closer and closer to 2. So you can have such a thing. Okay? And uh, uh, although this question was made so that I can demonstrate to you all these other, uh, other principles, uh, I also wanted to show you the difference between the value of the function and the limit, uh, that they are different. So for example, in B here, you should be using the value of the function because it's evaluated at 3. So in that case, it should be 4 minus 2 times negative 1, which is 6. But on the other hand, uh, this function, f and g of x, uh, has the behavior that as x gets closer and closer to, x goes to closer and closer to 3, this value gets closer and closer to 2, whereas this g of x gets closer and closer to negative 5. So you have... Uh, sorry, that's not my plus, that's minus 2 times this. So it's uh, 2 minus 2 times negative 5, so that's going to be 2 plus 10, which is 12. Okay, so in other words, if you know the limit and you have some expressions and you're evaluating the limit, uh, all you have to do is just plug that in, replace the f by the value, replace g by that value, and that's it. That's all this, these rules are saying. See, all these rules, all it's saying that is that if 
the value of the limit is a uh, and value of the limit is b just replace replace and of course you get a plus b that's that's basically all these rules uh, indicating so that's why I told you uh, don't worry about these it's just obvious okay all right so uh, now let's move on to the the last one here this one let's see as x goes to 3 this gets closer and closer to 2 right this gets closer to 2 g of x gets closer and closer to 5 negative 5 uh, and here what about this one well ah uh, you know what this in this case uh, you have over 0 right the limit of this becomes 0 so 2 times -5 and uh, the thing is, if the top is 2 and the bottom goes to closer and closer to 0, then you have 2 over something that's very, very small that goes to the positive infinity, right? Uh, so as limit x going to 3 plus of f of x over x minus 3, that's going to be 2 over 0 plus, uh, dividing 2 by something that's very small but positive that gives you positive infinity right on the other hand limit of x going to 3 minus of f of x over x minus 3 where uh, x goes to 3 minus then this will be negative so 0 minus and the top will get closer and closer to 2 in that case this will be negative infinity since the left and right limit don't match uh, this is really just does not exist okay so uh, this is does not exist. This is minus 10, but negative 10 plus something that the limit does not exist will be does not exist. So the answer to this will be does not exist. What if uh, instead of x minus 3, you had f of x over x minus 1? In this case, what would be the limit? Well. It's even easier in this case, uh, since f of x gets closer and closer to 2 as before. This is 3 minus 1. x gets closer and closer to 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. The other one is 2 times negative 5. In this case, it will be 1 plus negative 10, which is negative 9. So uh, you have uh, these four different examples. And I hope you that uh, seeing these questions can help you to understand what we are trying to say here and not pay attention to these uh, strange properties that you don't have to know.